Pittsburgh Steelers are two days through training camp here at St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and the uh, ramp-up period seems all but ramped up. And there are some winners, some obvious ones, some pretty big ones. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbein. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis coming from you live from St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Every day, I will bring you guys our Steelers To Go to make sure that I provide all the most up-to-date information that I possibly can. I don't want anybody to miss any information during Steelers training camp. Make sure to find us on youtube.com slash all Steelers talk. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcasts like this video. As always, let's dive in to some early winners at training camp here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I got some that I don't think will excite fans all that much. And then I have others that I believe are very exciting for all of Steelers nation. The biggest one, easy, Nick Herbig, outside linebacker, fourth round pick. The guy impressed at minicamp, he impressed in OTAs. The big side of caution here, the Steelers are not in pads, helmets and shorts right now. What did Nick Herbig do well in college? He had an explosive get off. He was always the fastest one off the ball. That first step was always the quickest and he's real smooth and technical with his hands. Right now, before pads come on, offensive linemen are at a disadvantage. They're looking at this situation going, we cannot use our body, we cannot use our strength. This is all footwork. And well, when you're 320 pounds going up a two, against a 250 pound, very quick, very athletic outside linebacker, chances are you're gonna lose. That being said, Herbig is at least five sacks deep through just two days of practice. He looks as impressive as TJ Watt Allen and Alex Highsmith, and, I, and I'm not trying to compare them. Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt are miles and years above Nick Herbig, but it's really nice to see that Herbig is a dude who is shining early. Marcus Golden is going to be a guy that once those pads come on, he's going to be explosive. He's a run stuffer. He's a power rusher. That's who he is. Herbig, on the other hand, all technical, all speed, and it's nice to be able to see that early. This dude has been impressive since the second he showed up in Pittsburgh, and that is something that should excite everybody. Because even if Marcus Golden is the outside linebacker three this year for the Steelers, and he's the primary backup behind TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, Herbig is the future. He is the next third outside linebacker. He is the next mix in this group with TJ and Alex. And that's exactly what the Pittsburgh Steelers were looking for when they drafted him. A dude who could come in here, and make plays now on a very limited basis and grow into a role where he is a key contributor to this defense. This season, even if he gets five snaps a game, that is huge, but all of those snaps will be earned here at training camp. And so far, he has hands down been the biggest winner for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is definitely a name to watch and I cannot wait for those pads to come on. My biggest thing is I hope that it continues. I hope that once those pads come on and things get physical, guys like, the Raven Clark and Broderick Jones and Dan Moore aren't beating him on the line of scrimmage. I hope that all of that continues and that he still holds an upper hand and continues to impress. But so far, biggest winner for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think possibly hands down. Number two is probably Anthony McFarlane. Two days in a row, and you could tell from my head right now, I am sunburnt as all can be. I am still sweating. I have not stopped sweating in two days here in Pittsburgh or in Latrobe, and I'm not doing anything. I'm standing on the sidelines talking to people, taking some notes. These guys are going 100%. The Steelers had a number of heat-related injuries today. Deontay Johnson went down. Calvin Austin cramped up. At one point, I saw the cramp in Alfonso Graham's calf. I watched this guy be unable to loosen a muscle in his calf. It was gross but it showed just how hot it is out here and how exhausting it is. Two days in a row, Anthony McFarlane is the last guy on the field for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This guy wants it bad. He understands the opportunity, and I think the Steelers are very excited about what Anthony McFarlane can do for them. I think they've been excited. It's been two years of me sitting around hyping up Anthony McFarlane, and to be totally honest with you guys, I'm getting a little tired of it. And I know you guys are getting tired of it too. I could tell by the engagement that every time Anthony McFarlane is mentioned, nobody really cares because at this point, he's let everybody down back-to-back -back seasons. 
This year, I feel like it's a little bit different. When you talk to Anthony McFarland, and I know I've talked to him in the past and I've gotten the same spiel, but you kind of get the sense that right now he fully gets the NFL game. He looks at this. He's comfortable. He sees what he's getting into. He totally understands the Steelers' offense and what Matt Canada wants him to do. He's taken first-team reps. He's caught a touchdown so far. He's had a couple of really big, nice catches, one over Cole Holcomb yesterday that I thought was the best play of the day. He just seems like a guy who's much more comfortable in his role and that the Steelers have an actual role for him. I don't know if he's ever going to be the run-up, the middle running back. I don't know if he's a true running back in the NFL. What I do know is that the Steelers have lined this guy up outside, in the slot, and in the backfield, and he's made plays at all three positions, and I expect that to continue. Anthony McFarlane, outside of Nick Herbig, in my opinion, has been the biggest winner for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You keep going, I got two more big ones. Allen Robinson is a name that should excite everybody. He totally changes what the Pittsburgh Steelers are capable of doing. Him and Kenny Pickett, the instant connection could not be stronger. You see it in George Pickens, him and Kenny have had a connection for two years. You see it in Deontay Johnson, that's growing and it's going to continue to get stronger. Connor Hayward's a name that we'll talk about here in a minute, but he's another one that you kind of feel him and Kenny just instantly clicked for some reason Allen Robinson stepped in the building and he became Kenny Pickett's favorite target he is seemingly always open when Kenny throws to him he had a beautiful beautiful fake on I believe Levi Wallace today where he was going get a little comeback and then said nope and kept it going wide open would have been a 60 yard touchdown I believe if this was an actual game untouched and nobody was going to catch him he had another touchdown during seven shots in the red zone very impressive Allen Robinson looks like Allen Robinson of the past not Allen Robinson the last two seasons or the last three seasons I'm talking 1200 yard seven touchdown Allen Robinson that we saw at a number of different spots throughout his NFL career. I think Allen Robinson's got a huge, huge future here in Pittsburgh. Just Even if it's just for this season, I think it's huge, and I think it's significant, and one that the Pittsburgh Steelers desperately need in a veteran. He rounds out everything that the Steelers are looking for in their wide receiver group. And so far, I think he's the third biggest winner for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Connor Hayward is next. Uh, he just seems very comfortable, very relaxed to be totally honest last year it was where is connor hayward gonna play he's fighting for a spot you could tell he's smaller you could tell he has to use his muscle and his athleticism to just try and make a play this year it's like oh connor hayward's shifty connor hayward when utilized correctly is well pretty decent player and i think we saw that towards the end of last season especially in atlanta and this summer it's coming out full force him and kenny already have a connection they've had a connection for two years now i don't expect that to die down and he's made some plays i believe he caught a touchdown today he's had a couple of nice catches he did pop up and limp for a second and that scared everybody but seemingly fine after practice coming into the off season he looked leaner immediately he just looked a little bit faster I think the biggest thing is the Steelers went into this offseason and told him exactly what they wanted him to be. They just executed a game plan and said, Connor, this is who you're going to be in the Steelers offense. I don't know if this is going to be you for the rest of your career, but for right now, as long as you stay in Pittsburgh, this is what we're going to utilize you as. It's a receiving option. He is the next Pat Fryermuth. And I don't mean next as in he's going to take over for Pat Fryermuth. I mean as in when Pat Fryermuth's not on the field, it's not going to be Darnell Washington that comes in and does the same things that Pat Fryermuth is told to do. It's going to be Connor Hayward. He's going to be Pat's backup. Darnell and Zach Gentry will be used as blocking options, and I'm sure Darnell will be used in the red zone and as a receiving threat from time to time, as will Gentry. Connor Hayward's going to be that go line up in the slot, run out of the offensive line as a tight end, catch some passes. That's what they're looking for him to do. And in year two, with a very dialed-in role laid completely out for him, he looks way better than he did in year one. And he was impressive in mini camp and training camp in year one. So it's only getting better. And then finally, a guy that I can't stop talking about, and I'm starting to feel that maybe I'm hyping him up a little too much, but he keeps making plays. And that's Elijah Riley. I talked to Elijah today and he told me before practice, yeah, day one's great. It's really nice to get that interception on day one and to kind of make a, a move and a play to kind of put myself out there. But at the same time, if I don't do anything else, nobody's going to care about that one play. 
So what did he do out today? What did he do when, when he came out today? He had a sack. And that's huge because that's what Elijah Riley is here to do. That's why I believe that Elijah Riley is the favorite for that nickelback position is because he is physical. He is the option off the edge that the Steelers could use as a Mike Hilton type corner. That's why I think Elijah Riley fits perfectly in what the Steelers are looking for. I think Duke Dawson is a, a very athletic former second round pick who clearly has all the ball skills that you're looking for. I think Trey Norwood is the most intelligent player in that group, maybe hands down. He was another Cam Sutton and the Steelers wanted to utilize him as such. I think that Chandon Sullivan has all of the experience and is a proven starter in this league, which I think is huge. But I just think Elijah Riley, at the end of the day, does everything that the Pittsburgh Steelers are looking for him to do. And through two days, back to back, he has done both of those things. He has come up with an interception and he has hit the quarterback. And I know he didn't actually touch the quarterback, but he got back there and it was a clear sack. If he continues, I just don't see a way that the Steelers don't keep this guy around. And I think that he is important to this defense and can play an actual role. So far, he's been impressive. All five of these guys have been very impressive. There have been names that popped up. I think Joey Porter Jr. looks really good on day one, didn't look so great on day two. I thought Kenny Pickett looked pretty good on day one, didn't look so great on day two. I think Mitch Trubisky looks red hot right now, but he's a backup quarterback, so... What do you really got to talk about there? Even if he did have the better camp, he's the backup quarterback, and that's what's going to happen there. Jalen Warren had a real explosive run today that I thought was nice, but, but that's really all we've seen from Jalen Warren so far. And Broderick Jones took his his first first team rep, and it came out of nowhere, but until the pads come on, nobody cares about offensive linemen. But right now, those are the five that stood out, and those are a good five for the Pittsburgh Steelers. If those five are your biggest winners so far, you have – some pretty good depth options and some pretty big stars that you could find as contributors to this team. Names that maybe people didn't have the highest expectations for. Names that just add to the talent of this team. Kenny will click. George Pickens will have big plays. Deontay Johnson will get healthy and he will have big plays. Najee Harris is going to be Najee Harris and Jalen Warren is going to break a couple of them. Pat Fryermuth is Pat Fryermuth and the offensive line hopefully looks better. If you get these guys, these backups, these smaller pieces, these wide receiver threes to come out here and make some big plays early, it's got to feel good if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers to know that this team might be a lot deeper than you thought they were going to be coming into Latrobe.